Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to another episode of Strange Fantasy. I'm Travis. Ashley here. We're the creators, writers, and producers of the show. And we just wanted to take a quick second before diving into tonight's tawdry tale to let you know that if you like Strange Fantasy, be sure and show your love by subscribing, downloading, and rating the show on iTunes, Spotify, or any of the many platforms we exist on. And for exclusive rewards and merchandise are just to donate to our cause to help us to continue to thrive. Be sure to visit our Patreon page at patreon.com forward slash strange fantasy. Follow us on Facebook and Instagram by searching Strange Fantasy Show for updates and haunting original art. All this and more can be found at our website, strangefantasyshow.com. And now... Your feature presentation. Welcome to another regaling of strange fantasy. Obscure odysseys meant to shock the nervous system and stir the very core of your soul. Tonight's tale is of deceit and revenge. Two things when put together make the perfect recipe for disaster. In this special holiday installment entitled The Pale Shade of Winter. What time you got, Rick? Hmm, let's see here. Mm, about quarter past eleven, Miss Miriam. <sighs> Only another hour till Christmas. Whoop de doo. Shit, give me another drink, Rick. Okay, but I gotta close soon. You know the drill, always close up early on Christmas Eve. So this will be the last drink I can serve you, Miss Miriam. Ain't that the truth? Every year for what, the past, hmm, since I was old enough to come in here, spend my Christmas Eve with my favorite bartender. Better make it a double then. Coming right up. This one's on the house. Thanks, Rick. Ooh, you're gonna die if you keep drinking like that. Better than the alternative. Hmm. We're all gonna die someday, Rick. Some sooner than others. Are you in some kind of trouble, Miss Miriam? <sighs> it's nothing for you to worry about, Rick. Well, I like to think I take a personal interest in every one of my patrons. And that's partly the reason why y'all keep coming back to old Rick's. Cause I care. Cause I listen. So go on then. Tell me what's got you in trouble. I really don't think you'd understand, Rick. I've seen and heard a lot of crazy shit in my day. Try me. You know, Miss Miriam, you've been sitting in that exact same spot all day getting loaded and periodically looking back at the door as if you was expecting someone. Is that it? Are you expecting someone and they didn't show? Something like that, yeah. Speak of the devil. And he shall appear. Hi there. Is this gin joint still open? For now? Come on in, son. Take a seat and have a drink. Thanks, old timer. Damn taxi service out here is god awful. Guy said he wouldn't take me past this point. Any of y'all know why that might be? Couldn't say. Perhaps it's due to the holiday? You see, 
I thought that too until I noticed he seemed to be getting increasingly scared of something. What could he have been afraid of? Couldn't say. He wouldn't tell me anything else other than I can't take you any further. And where is it you're heading? Wilford Station. Well, you almost made it. Wilford Station is the next town over. Maybe another 12 miles east? And is this the only road that'll take me there? Well, no. But it is the fastest and closest. Any other route would easily add 30 miles to your journey. <sighs> well, it seems as if I'm shit out of luck then. Would you happen to have a phone I could use to try and call another taxi out this way? Sorry to say, but the phone here has been broken for about a week. Been waiting for someone to come out here and fix the goddamn thing. I've got a phone in my house. You'd be welcome to use it. Well, that'd be amazing. Yeah, I'd be willing to pay you for your time. No pay needed, stranger. I'm so sorry. My name is Job. Pleasure to meet you, Job. I'm Miriam. And I'm Rick. In case you were wondering. <laughs> well, pleased to meet you both. So, Miriam, do you live very far? Not at all. Just a quick ten minute walk down the road. Walk? What's wrong? Not scared of the dark, are ya? What? No, I, I was... I'm just kidding, Job. <laughs> Understood. Would it be possible to get going soon? Absolutely. I was just leaving when you walked in. Come on, handsome. I'll protect ya. Here, before you two go, a little something to keep y'all warm in the cold dark night. Mighty kind of you, Rick. Wow, thanks. Let's get going, yeah? Sounds good. Uh, take care, Rick. Uh, happy holidays. Same to you. Wow. So this is all your family's land? That's right. From Rick's bar to Wolford Station. My grandfather was extremely savvy with his investments. I'll say. Paid off in spades for the future of his family. So do you live alone? That's a rather odd question for a stranger to ask. Oh, no, no, I'm so sorry. That's not how I meant it. I was just wondering if, you know... Geez, you're really bad at taking a joke. <laughs> okay. Phew. <laughs> I, just, I just really didn't want to come off as, like, a creep or something. All people, no matter who they are, have a little bit of a creep inside of them. It beckons us to do and act certain things to expose us to the true nature of the creep deep in us. It's normal. Normal? How do you mean? Well, for instance, look around you, Job. We've been walking through a cemetery. Whoa! Ho! Oh, what the shit? Precisely. You see, I think that with certain people, these trivial ideals we proclaim such as, oh, that's weird, or isn't that strange, are gone. They don't mean anything to us. They've all been washed away by the waves of indifference. Because life, for some, is obviously worse than it is for others, and these people are especially dangerous, wouldn't you agree? Yeah, I suppose so. Then why are they considered dangerous? Because they don't fear things like a typical person would. They're numb to it. Not numb, Job. They are indifferent. Once that filter is gone, the idea of fear or death or whatever is made more clear. Oh, we fear what we don't understand. Correct. We are indifferent to things we do understand but cannot control. Oh, interesting. So, to answer your question, no, I don't live alone. I live with my two brothers. Oh, okay. And are they as kind to strangers as you are? Somewhat. I don't know if I like that somewhat. Would there be any reason we're walking through a cemetery? Yes, in fact. There are multiple reasons. Such as? Oh, you were expecting a list? Let's see. Well, for starters, this is my family's private graveyard, as well as the fastest route home. <laughs> a private graveyard, eh? That's pretty unique. Don't really hear of, you know, too many family graveyards anymore. That's because they're all dead. <laughs> Another joke? Somewhat. The boundaries which divide life and death are at best shadowy and vague. So whom shall say where one begins and where the other ends? Poe? Seems fitting. It's strangely comforting out here. Would you like to hear a story to pass the time? Sure. You see that mausoleum over there? A tall one with a stained glass window? That's where my mother and father are buried. Oh, wow. I'm, 
I'm sorry for your loss. Oh no, nothing to be sorry for. My mother was as rotten of a soul as they come. A tyrant, really. She murdered my father, who was a beautiful and compassionate man. Then she blew her brains out in the foyer. God damn! My goodness. How tragic. Depends on who you'd ask. Hard to believe that it was just a year ago. A year? Yep. To the day, in fact. Nothing like waking up on Christmas morning to a gruesome murder scene. There's still some of Father's blood sprayed across the walls. Not even our tallest ladder could reach up that high. What? Oh look, we're home! Holy smokes! You live here? This is... This is practically a mansion! Practically. It was measured at 61,246 square feet. 41 rooms, 17 bedrooms, and 15 bathrooms. Accented by 32 fireplaces. I think it's safe to say, definitely, this is a mansion. Probably one of the largest in the country. Forgive me if I downplayed its magnitude. <whistles> wow, wee! You know, this, this is impressive. Might as well be a goddamn castle. Yes, indeedy. So it's just the three of y'all in there? That's right. How the hell do you keep up the place? Seems like it'd be a journey just to walk from one side to the other. We try our best now that father is gone. Oh, shit. Sorry. Your condolences are appreciated, but not needed, Job. Sorry. <laughs> You're awkward, huh? Son of a bitch! It's even more impressive on the inside. Try and keep your voice down. My brothers may not... Miriam, is that you? Shit. What? Is everything all right with me being here? Yes, just shut up and let me do all the talking. I don't want to impose. If I'm not welcome, then I could just leave and make my own way. In fact, you know, I thank you for your time. I'm going to get going. No, don't move. Miriam? In here, Moses. Whatever you do, don't say anything about his eyes. His eyes. Hello, Miriam. Decided, after all, to join us tonight. Ugh, bleh. You smell like a filthy drunk. Oh, it seems you've brought home a guest. Is that right, Erin? Someone else in the room with her? <clears throat> I thought so. No doubt a disturbed stranger to lay in your bed, Miriam. <sighs> Moses, I swear on Father's grave, if you do not shut that fat mouth of yours, I'm gonna take that cane and beat you to death with it. You can most certainly try. <laughs> now, why hasn't your guest been kind enough to introduce himself, hmm? Has he had his tongue removed like Aaron? <laughs> show him, Aaron. Show him your mouth. Uh... <laughs> Moses, please stop. Oh, piss off. Just having a bit of fun. Is the season and all that shit. Now, who the hell are you, boy? Go on, speak. My name is Job, sir. Well, Job, welcome to our humble abode. Thank you. Don't thank me yet. <laughs> Come on, Job, you're gonna need a thicker hide than that if you plan on staying in our presence. <laughs> well, sir, uh, speaking of, I'm hoping to get on my way as soon as possible. How's that so? I just... I needed to use a phone. I, uh, the taxi I hired just sort of dumped me off at the bar down the way where I, uh... You found our dearest drunken sister, so I suppose you need lodging for the night? No, not at all. I just need a phone, and Rick's was broken at the moment. So Miriam was kind enough, you know, to have offered me some assistance. I just need a cab is all, you know... Uh, but I, I certainly w w wouldn't want to impose. Nonsense. You must stay the night. I really doubt you can find a taxi at this time of night. And on Christmas Eve, unless you have family you are rushing back to. Nope. No family. I mean, I have a girlfriend, but she's with her parents. Oh, looks like Miriam won't be having you after all. Can't you just shut up already, Moses? Though I think he's right about a taxi. You're more than welcome to try and call now or wait until morning. I can probably drive you then. Okay, I mean, if you have the room, then I would love to take you up on your generosity. The room? My God, man, we have all the room. Now come and have a drink by the fire. It's almost midnight. Mm. 
Have a seat. Thank you. What's your poison? Poison? Surely you're not daft. Oh, <laughs> I'll, I'll have whatever's easy. Here, have some scotch. Aaron, if you would not mind pouring us all some. Mm. You have any fun, entertaining stories for us? It is customary for a guest to offer something in return for the hospitality of the host. I, uh, well, nothing as entertaining as all of this, I'm afraid. Hmm. So how do you like Miriam? Moses, stop. Did you notice anything odd about her? Look at her golden, silky hair. It's always down, I imagine. Tell me, Job, is her hair still blonde? Oh, yes, it is. It's quite pretty. Did you notice what was missing? Jesus, Moses, you're an asshole. I have no ears. Yes, I wear my hair down to cover it. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, thank you. Aaron, was it? Uh, thanks. How is he? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Very good. Very, uh, good. Smooth. It should be. If we were to put a dollar amount on that one sip, sir, it would be worth about $4,000. Uh, if I had known, I... I, I uh... Nonsense. We have more money than we would ever know what to do with. Miriam, why don't you go turn down a bed for our honored guest? Arian and I can keep him in good company for a while. After all, he won't be shacking up with you. Hey, I, I really am fine j just even here. I, I could sleep here. Or maybe I should just, you know, try and call someone. They're harmless, Job. Arrogance is the only weapon Moses has, and well, Aaron, he really is sweet. You are no bother. I'll be right back. So, um, hmm. Do you have a question? Well, I, I hate to be so blunt, but, uh, have you always been blind? What a question to ask. I'll blame it on the scotch. No need to worry. Our dear mother did this to me when she caught me looking at a dirty magazine. Oh, man, that's awful. I can't even imagine. That's not even the half of it, literally. Are you wondering now how Aaron lost his tongue, or maybe perhaps how Miriam lost her ears? Our mother was a bit of a religious zealot. So for... One thing or another, we were all punished, and together, we are quite the bunch of misfits. Her final gift to us was murdering father. I suppose that old bag was right. We are all ripe with sin, really rotten with it. None of us are clean, no matter how pure we seem. We just happen to wear our sin on the outside. I don't mean to make you uncomfortable. I'm a bit crass, and being isolated hasn't helped much. Uh, did Miriam tell you what happened to our mother? Yeah, sh yeah, she did. I understand now why you know, she said that condolences were not necessary. Mm -hmm. My thoughts exactly, Aaron. And pray tell, what version did she regale you with? Was it a crime of passion? Where mother, in a flurry of emotions, killed our father and in an act of remorse, blew her brains out. I'm sure she said that. It's one of her favorites. What really happened, my good man, was our sweet Miriam, our lovable, sweet, drunken sister, killed her. Well, I suppose we all did in a way. Miriam just knocked her out after she had found our father dead. And then it was Aaron who drug her unconscious body through the graveyard. And it was I who shut the lid on the coffin. With their help, of course. You probably walked past her final resting place on the way up to the door. Did you see the mausoleum? That's what we did one year ago today. I imagine what it was like for her when she woke up entombed wonder if she thought, how could someone else be so cruel? And then I wonder if she felt proud of us. I don't feel bad for what we did. None of us do. I just hope her spirit can finally rest. Maybe I should just be on my way. 
You really can't take a joke, can you? <laughs> <laughs> you almost had me, Moses. Well, it's almost showtime. Showtime? Oh. Oh. Didn't dent the tray, did you? It's an antique after all. <sighs> Hey, 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 what the? Why am I chained to this chair? What's going on? What are you people doing? What are you, what are you saying? Oh, God, what is this? A pentagram. God, oh, God. Oh, what are you? Some kind of Satanist? Just let me go, hey. Please, please, please let me go. Please just let me go, Miriam. Please, Miriam. Miriam, please just let me go. Oh, what the hell is that? What is that? What is that thing, that light? Get away from me. No, go, go away, go. No! Do you think it worked? How the hell should I know? I can't see a goddamn thing. You, go have a look. Hey, are you in there, Job? Hey. Job. To oh, oh, shit! Call me mother, my dearest daughter. Well, sounds as though it worked. Lucky old Grand Peepaw was into dark magic. Go on, Aaron, say hello to mother. <laughs> oh, that's right. Aaron sends his best regards to you, Mother. Still, Still just as arrogant as always, my poor perverted Moses. Always such a trouble boy. I suppose it's my fault since you were my first child. I didn't know how hard to discipline you. Or how to get this sin out of you correctly. Well, you have me now, children. What do you want from me? I really didn't mind just torturing you from my spectral world. Why the body? Feel guilty about murdering your mother? You summoned me. You forced me into this body. For what? Well, that's just it, Mother. We thought once we had you put in that box, you would just leave us alone, but you simply couldn't do that, could you? Somehow you managed to torture us every single day, always in our dreams or always on the periphery of our vision, constantly driving us mad. You deserve what you got, bitch. We have nothing to be guilty over, and since you couldn't leave us alone in your afterlife and be a good girl and just move on, well, we'll just have to keep you in here in this basement, chained up and chained down to this body. His name was Job. <laughs> you think that'll work? You can't just simply keep me in here. He needs water. Food. Air and movement. You didn't think about that, did you? Well, we did actually. This is your new home forever and ever and ever and ever and ever until the last of us dies. Now we can finally live in peace. You'll never haunt us again, you hear me? You stupid, selfish bitch. It's over. We are done with your tormenting, and we are now the tormentors. We have control, not you. Pretty clever for you all to have figured this out. How could you ever really forget about me, though? The real me. All that I did to you, only to make sure your hearts were pure. I just wanted you three to be safe. That's all. 
And the only way to do that is through suffering. Don't you children understand? It was all for love. Because I love you so much. Especially my sweet Barry. My baby boy. You are my best mistake ever. There I go being envious. Envious of your sweet nature, Aaron. Remember our bonding time? Do you remember that, Aaron? Hmm? Mommy's sweet little baby. But you had to turn around and badmouth your brother and sister. You came and you tattled on them to me. Though it was very pious of you. It's still it's not, not tolerated. tolerated. I, I couldn't, couldn't treat you any different. But you but always you knew you were my favorite, favorite right? right? That's enough, demon. We'll be back momentarily. Until then, you can sit in your own filth. Oh, and Mother, happy Christmas. Well, I personally think she could starve a little. Maybe just some water. I'll have Aaron work on getting an IV and feeding tube set up. I know how you feel, Aaron. It's confusing for us all, but remember, it's nothing personal against Job. He was just dealt a bad hand. That's all. But I guess until we get this IV situation under control, we should go down and give him some food and water at least. We want to make sure he stays alive and healthy enough not to die. Who's up first? Well, for obvious reasons, I'm not doing it. I'm liable to break my neck falling down the stairs. Miriam? No way, that's not fair. I'm the one who had to get him here to begin with, and not to mention, I'm the one who found the book on the dark magic that allowed us to do the soul transfer. And Aaron was the one who actually hit him on the back of the head. Moses, I don't think you were doing your part around here. You're using your disability <laughs> as a crutch, I think. Gentlemen never get his hands dirty. I say we make the youngest do it. Aaron, what do you say? Just for now, you do the heavy lifting, so to speak. We can work out some sort of system later. After all, it was my idea to set up an IV and a feeding tube. <clears throat> there you go. What a good sport you are. <laughs> Is that my baby, Aaron? You're, You're so, so sweet. sweet. You brought me brought some me food, food and water. water. I knew you still loved me. me. I know those others who talked you into doing this. I know you didn't want to kill me the first time. And I know you don't want me to suffer. Now, my sweet boy, I know they talked you into it. They were always such a bully to you. Do you remember how I would protect you from them? Your father always said I coddled you too much, and I said no. Nothing is too good for my sweet Aaron. What if you let me out of here? It could just be me and you. I'll protect you. I should have done a better job before. I should have stopped them from poisoning your mind. And now look what's happened. Because of them, your tongue is gone. I may have done the act, but it's because of them I had to do it. They are sin, and they became your sin. They poisoned you against me, and now it's time for us to poison them. What do you say? Just me and you, my one perfect baby. That's it. 
of a drunk, and you, too foolish to do such a thing. Hmm. I know I'm supposed to turn the other cheek, and you really are my favorite, but some things just can't be let go of, such as you three ungrateful bastards killing me and trapping me in this man's body. Don't, Don't worry. worry, your <coughs> brother and sister <coughs> will be joining you, you soon. soon. <coughs> Dark magic. <coughs> Such a pity. I guess I next is, is Miriam. Hello, daughter. Did I surprise you? Wake you from your drunken sleep? That's not very ladylike. Such a shame. You're such a pretty thing. However, lust is also a terrible sin. Goodbye, daughter. Only the oldest is left. One more deed to be done. I always regret to change my greatest disappointment. Must have passed out after that scotch. Hello! Hello! Happy Christmas! Hello! <laughs> Fires went out. Mm, that's no good. Well, at least they gave me a blanket. Passing out like this. Damn. I hope I wasn't too much of a bother. <sighs> Hmm. The hill? Oh my god. A knife. My clothes. I'm, I'm covered in blood. What the hell's happening? A note. Shit. Okay. Please be another sick joke. Please be another sick joke. Okay. Why would they leave me a letter? Ha uh, ha ha, okay. Uh, mm. It says, Dear Job, Thank you for letting me clear out my unfinished business. I believe I left your body in the condition in which I found it. It's good faith for your assistance that you provided. You'll find behind the mantle 
There is enough money for you to have your own little mansion. Some of the only money I could hide from my greedy children. I find you to be more deserving and I am truly grateful for everything you've done. You may want to consider getting rid of those clothes and perhaps even that knife. Signed, Mother. And you think your family is awful? It seems that Job was in the wrong place at the right time for the holidays. It's always important to put your best foot forward and the knife in someone's back. <laughs> Thus concludes tonight's strange fantasy. Tune in next time for another look into the strange and obscure. Strange Fantasy presented The Pale Shade of Winter, written by Travis Scarborough and Ashley Scarborough, produced by Ashley Scarborough and Travis Scarborough, original score by Travis Scarborough and Danny Lucas. The players of tonight's tale are as follows. Travis Scarborough as Rick the Bartender, Job, Aaron, and the Possessed Mother, Ashley Scarborough as Miriam and Mother, and Heath Allen as Moses. Strange Fantasy Show was created by Travis Scarborough, and Strange Fantasy is copyright 2019, Strange Fantasy Productions, all rights reserved. All characters appearing in this work are fictitious. Any resemblance to real persons living or dead is purely coincidental.